Hello everybody, welcome to Long Live the Queen. My name is Anna Mardal, and I promised that today we were going to try to go through my walkthrough where we uh, romanced Brienne. Um, I've found out since the last Let's Play that I've done that the new content has probably very definitely been pushed to all the Steam uh, installations of the game that my last Let's Play didn't have the new content. We should have been able to tell by uh, the minstrel spy having a uh, avatar and she didn't. So we'll see if we see her this time. Uh, I have been informed that some of my old walkthroughs don't necessarily work the same way anymore because some of the options have changed like how the game handles taxes if you don't have any accounting skills. So I'm working off of an old walkthrough that I put together like last year and I have no idea if it works anymore so we'll find out won't we. So we're gonna start the game and y'all have probably all been through like six or seven or eight of these with me already. I will try not to belabor the same points each time. This is your father, Jocelyn, the Duke of Caloris, who is, I'm sad to say, kind of useless. And this particular playthrough, he is not going to be very happy with us. So <laughs> um, that's just something that we're going to have to come to terms with now. So he says, we're almost home. This is you, this is Elodie, the crown princess. And she is very sad because her mother has just died. She's 14 years old and we have to keep her alive to her 15th birthday and coronation. <laughs> so, all of Nova depends on her. We're gonna say we've played this before <laughs> because we, we do fortunately know how this works by now. And I'm going to be saving regularly because, uh, like I said, I don't know necessarily whether my walkthrough that I put together will work now that the changes have supposedly gone into place. So we may have to back up a couple times and make some different uh, decisions. So. First and foremost, my goal for this one, in addition to romancing Brienne, is um, which romancing Brienne means going on her uh, quest to the old forest. So we're going to need to build up uh, Elodie's weaponry, athletics, all this stuff to to make sure that she survives that very dangerous trip. And we're also going to build up our ability to do like military stuff because whenever Sanjia invades, we want to beat them um, the good old fashioned military way. Um, so we're not going to be doing a lot of magic, I don't think, and really not even so much of the social stuff. We're going to be uh, powerhouse Elodie and military Elodie and, and we're going to see how that goes. So. This is our mood. We are depressed. Our skills are non-existent. We only have one outfit. And for the first week, we are going to study logistics and more logistics. So we're already just diving into the military stuff. And the thing I said, this is an old playthrough. I did, I checked and I did this one in like February of last year. It's now March of this year. Um, I don't know that this is optimized, but hey, this is how I did it, so I'm going to repeat it here. <laughs> it'll, it'll be like discovering what I did and why. So here's our logistics, which we probably took because of all the things we need to take, it wasn't any kind of negative for being depressed. What's all the noise outside? It's my cousins, my, my evil Lumen aunt. And her nice, my, my nice uncle, her husband, and my cousin Charlotte with her <laughs> creepy red Fabergé egg eyes. Mommy said we'll be here all month. And it's excellent because we just got a cheerful for that. So we're going to go walk in the gardens, which will help. Well, that's, that's new. Show tooltips. Tool oh. Oh, neat. Because whenever you hover, 
you get these. And now we can get them all at a glance. Interesting. And then we can always see our mood at this juncture. So we're going to go walk in the gardens. Is what we're going to do. And that brought our mood, our depression up. So afraid is the most dominant because it always goes from left to right. So afraid is our most dominant emotion right now. And this, this is our fear face. So for our classes, we're going to study flexibility and more flexibility. Ooh, which gives us a nice afraid bonus. So instead of getting 20 in two class, like 10 and 10, we got 15 and 15, so we're at 30, which is very nice. What's the commotion outside? It's Juliana, Duchess of Ursul, who is our default magic teacher, unless we send her away and we get the priestess as our magic teacher. Uh, Jocelyn, our father, does not like her. And we've got this nice little question mark. So I always call her our aunt and I don't believe she's actually related. Y'all have had to correct me several times and for some reason I just think I keep wanting to slot her into that. But no, she's just Duchess of Ursul. Good, good. I am a Lumen, as was she, and like every Lumen I am willing to give my life if necessary to protect our domain. Your line has been traitors for 200 years. I won't have you corrupting my daughter. So we have an option to send her away, arrest her, or let her stay. I chose to arrest her because that way she can't save us from the snake and I guess I wanted to 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 save myself from the snake. <laughs> like I said, I think this particular playthrough I was just trying to find new content. So you are a traitor to the crown, I ought to have you executed. Guards, arrest her! And we got an angry, which is good because that helps with our with our afraid. So I think we're going to our dominant moves to press now. And let's go see um, Charlotte. She says, I'm, Elodie says, I'm probably not going to be allowed to leave this castle until my birthday, but at least we can have fun here together. So we knocked that down a lonely and got another cheerful. So I think we're back to afraid. Yes. So we're, we're, we're sort of trying to baseline our mood out here. Um, I have in my notes... Oh, reflexes. Okay, so we're afraid again. So we've got an agility bonus. So we're going to say classes, uh, reflexes, and reflexes. It's always so fun going back over my notes in real time and trying to figure out why did I do that? Oh, I did it for a good reason. So now we're at 33.3 .3 on reflexes. And we can now play sports on the weekend. Charlotte's out in the gardens playing with flowers. You gather your skirts and prepare to sit down when all of a sudden a hissing noise alerts you to hidden danger. A snake! Charlotte, don't move! With quick reflexes, you grab a forked stick and manage to flip the snake away from you and your cousin. So we saved ourselves. Get away, you horrible thing. You stomp loudly on the ground and the snake slithers off into the distance. Lucille, Countess of Nyx, who brought the snake with her, comes out very fortuitously. What is going on here? What was the snake doing in the royal gardens? This is completely unacceptable. You could have been killed. Elodie scared it off. That's not good enough. I can't have my daughter remaining in such a dangerous place. We are returning home to Mervit at once. And we got a plus one to anger. Because we don't like how she's acting. Which I think is just delightful. So. Now our dominant mood is depressed. And so what we're going to do is. Mm. Well, I have in my notes that we sneak out. So we're going to sneak out. Sneak out of the castle to have a little fun. You enjoy your freedom, but your father won't like it if he finds out. So that gate made us lonely and willful. 
Oh, sure enough. So, so instead of trying to bring the depression back to baseline and having no mood, which would give us no bonuses, we took a plus two to willful, which bumped it more than our plus one to depress. So now our dominant mood is willful. So we are going to study. Oh, we're going to study court manners because we need one of those for a check coming up. And then we're going to study foreign intelligence for which we have a bonus. So we're going to say um, court manners and foreign intelligence. Done. Oh, I keep forgetting to save. I said we'd save often and then I just didn't. Bonus for Willful. The current Duke of Sedna is 26 years old and unmarried. He might be considered a good marriage prospect for you. For this weekend, we're going to go visit um, Juliana in the dungeons. You venture into the depths of the castle dungeons. The Duchess of Ursula is there in her cell, sitting perfectly straight on the bench against the wall and looking your direction as if she'd been expecting you. Caution is wise for one in your position. Hasty judgments can lead to trouble. Are you ready to listen now? So we're going to hear her out. What do you want to say? It is the responsibility of the king or queen of Nova to handle magical energies to protect the domain. That is what a lumen does, what your mother did, and what I do. My father said it was your fault she died. What he said was that she died by magic. Being a lumen is never safe. We pay a high price for our powers. This is such a good example of your father not being very useful because that distinction is important and he knows it. He has a lumen crystal of his own that he's not activated and hasn't trained in, if I recall correctly, but ah, it's just, this is a really good example of him not communicating well. So anyway. But without a Lumen Queen, this entire domain is at risk. Release me and I will teach you what you need to know to keep your responsibilities. We missed a lore check there. I think the lore check was just that she's telling the truth, that the kings and queens are always Lumens. Um, so we're going to free her. I don't have any choice, do I? And we got plus one to pressured. Fine, I'll have the guards release you. Come to me in my rooms as soon as you can to begin your training. Um, and that was our, what we did for the weekend, so we don't get to pick uh, an activity. Um, the pressured undid the lonely that we took for sneaking out, and we're still willful. So, because we have this willful bonus to intrigue, we're going to study internal affairs. Um, intrigue, internal affairs, internal affairs, boom. Ah, oh, I keep forgetting to save. Somebody remind me to save. Until you have children of your own, your maternal uncle, the Duke of Merva, that was that brunette guy who arrived with Charlotte and um, Lucille, is next in line for the crown, and after him would be his daughter, your cousin Charlotte. Your maternal uncle's wife, the Countess Nix, claims kinship to the old Merva line and originally asked your mother for title to the duchy. No one could verify her lineage, so as a compromise, your mother created her brother, Duke of Merva. Uh... One of the maids approaches for your attention. My lady courtiers have arrived from the Duke of Sedna. That's Alice. Uh, we have foreign intelligence to know that Sedna is in Talais, the domain to our southeast. They have brought a letter and a gift. We have the court manners to know that it may not be appropriate to wear a man's gift in public. So we're going to say don't wear it. It's important to maintain the proper image. And then for our mood... Oh, I don't have in my notes what I did for the morning. Hold on just one second. Okay, we're back. I found it in my notes. For our mood, we um, attended services in the Castle Grove, which will bring up our depressed and keep us willful. So there we are. That's what I was thinking we did, but I wanted to double check. Um, still willful. And we've got a military bonus, so... Ah, yeah, ah, I have in my notes that we study logistics. If I throw down two logistics, it's going to be more than 30. And since I can't take this higher than 50, I'll be wasting a couple of... Hmm, 
well, I'm going to follow my notes. But just so you know, there may be a more efficient way to do this. Like to swap out a strategy or a naval strategy. Oh, I know why I need so much logistics to start with. Because when the, um, when the ambassadors come uh, to talk with uh, Bryn and Banyan, you need logistics in order to, uh, if I recall correctly, to, to, to barter them down. So we're going to go ahead and take two classes in logistics. Because of this bonus, it's going to take us straight up to the 50 line. And we can't get higher than 50 until we've trained strategy and naval strategy both to be higher than 25. So it'll be a little bit of a waste, but I think it's a waste that we'll, we're, we're, gonna, we're okay with taking. So two logistics classes. You study different types of transports. And... And see, there, it would have gone just a little higher than 50, but it's okay. Um, you learn about support costs created by support. The more equipment you have, the more people and animals you need to move them. You learn about the difficulty of obtaining new supplies from the field. So basically, you're learning that war is expensive. <laughs> your skill in logistics is now 50. You may not increase this skill until your other military skills are 25 or higher. Celine, your royal highness, this is the priestess. I would speak with you. What is it? You have many questions, and the answers are within your grasp. You need only choose to seek them. Speak to the Duchess of Ursul. She will guide you on your path. Okay, we're going to go talk to Juliana, Duchess of Ursul. What is it that you wanted to teach me? I need to know if you have your mother's crystal. So we've all seen this conversation so many times. Uh, every lumen has a crystal that only they can, can use and touch and hold and until they die. And our mother had a crystal that we're supposed to inherit, but we don't know where it is. We are still willful. We are going to be willful for a while, I think. Um, we're going to study foreign intelligence and ciphering classes. Oh, I need to save. <laughs> uh, what week is this? Um, we're on week seven, I think. Oh, week six. Let's try that again. Uh, return. So we're gonna say uh, foreign intelligence and ciphering. Oh, the political disruption in Tombula in recent years has caused a disruption in their chocolate production, which is to the benefit of Nova, particularly the Duchess, Duchy of Kegel. I wonder if that's linked to the poison chocolates that you get later. Um, Ciphering. As you're walking up the stairs, a maid comes running down holding a towering pile of linen. We have no elegance, but we have reflexes to step swiftly aside and let her pass. Uh, we're going to go talk to our father about mom's lumen crystal. It's in a safe place. Can I have it? No. Willful, but it's mine. <laughs> Meddling with magic killed your mother. I don't want that to happen with with you once you're crowned clean i can't stop you from doing anything you want but for now you're a child so like the one time he asserts authority is to make us waste a couple of weeks trying to get our stupid crystal we're still willful we are going to take two more classes in ciphering which should bring us up to past 25 on all the intrigue stuff look at that we have a bonus of 1.83 uh ciphering and ciphering You have unlocked a new outfit. <laughs> Increased by almost 20 in one class. There is a man here to see you. He wishes crown funding for the project. The treasury is not unlimited. And he wants to make a printing press. And we don't have any of the production or trade to know how awesome that would be. So we said no. Let's go talk to Juliana and report to her. My father says I can't have the crystal until I'm queen, so we'll just have to wait. There may not be time to wait. So, the crystal is probably held under guard in the royal treasury. You are the princess. You should be able to find a way inside. Otherwise, we might have to take drastic action. What kind of drastic action? What do you mean by drastic action? Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Try to reach the crystal. If you can't, come and talk to me again. Okay. We are still willful. 
we need to bring up our agility. So we're going to study... What is this new? Oh, it's to let you know there's a new outfit. Okay. Um, here's our cat suit. Our awesome cat suit, which I've mentioned this before. I appreciate that it's zipped up all the way. That's excellent. Um, so we're going to take our... We're going to bring our dance up. And that should actually unlock another... Agility dance, agility dance, go. You practice curtsying, standing, and walking across the floor in a graceful manner. And oops, sure enough, dance 2026, 20, we've unlocked a new outfit. Banyan, <laughs> a special place in my heart for this conniving asshole. You're, how old is he? We look 31, good grief. So he's around twice our age. Um brother is Bennett Earl Consort of Dis. Your Highness, my sympathies for your loss. Even after all these years, I sometimes forget that my own mother will never be coming back. I must call for your aid. The Ixianite occupation of the country of Ibrium has gone on for too long. Now is the time to push back. We don't have the foreign affairs to know that the Ixianite occupation was basically brought on by Bryn and Banyan um, <laughs> misbehaving is like Duke's gone wild or whatever um, military but we have plenty of troops so it wouldn't be that hard to drive them out if we wanted to fight so we're going to say let's try to negotiate there must be a peaceful way to settle, settle this I will send for diplomats from Ixion thank you your highness if I may say so you are looking particularly lovely this day I hope you will think fondly of me <laughs> he has the big eyes. Is he flirting with me? He's almost as old as my father. Um, so we're going to try to get into the treasury. No, treasury. Here we are. Uh, you try to talk your way past the... Okay, so we got angry and willful. You try to talk, talk your way past the treasury guards, but despite eyelash fluttering, foot stomping, and outright threats, they won't budge. We didn't have the accounting to be there legitimately, and we didn't have the presence to just push our way through um we had taken a yielding from agreeing to help banyan but the treasury attempt pushed our willful back up and gave us an angry and we have a new outfit which should be the oh it's the t dance tutu which is not the worst um not the worst tutu i've ever seen i like the color gradient but we're going to put the cat suit back on and we're gonna say what is this week nine yes week nine <laughs> um we are going to study archery which is a shame because we don't have any bonuses to it oh i believe angry will give us a bonus. so eventually oh once again i'm going to trust my notes Weapons, archery, weapons, archery. Go. Uh, hmm. We're getting a little bit of a bonus. Because normally it would be 10. I don't know why. Interesting. Um, the representative from Ixian is here. Be careful. No one wants to give up prizes that they have won. You have the full support of my sister and myself, your highness. <laughs> Let's get this over with. This is Bryn. Um, we've romanced her before, and I keep thinking we're going to romance her in this one, but no, this is the Brienne romance one. I'm getting my playthroughs mixed up. Age 33. Oh, so she's actually older than Banyan. Um, and single. So... We don't have the Noman history to have any kind of background with the diplomat of Ixian. We will forget about your unprovoked attacks on us and you will transfer the rights to this little province. We can be good neighbors again without any lives being lost. That foreign affairs would have told us that um, the the war was really Bryn's fault and we could try to blame her instead of taking, taking um, responsibility ourselves. Um, so what we are going to do is we're going to offer money if Ixian withdraws. That is not acceptable. All the land north of the river belongs to us. We are willing to offer some payment in exchange for the inconvenience you have suffered, but nothing more. Well, I believe we could settle the matter for 8,000 golden lassie. That's a lot of money. We have the logistics. That's a lot of money. Maybe I can talk him down by reminding him how much a war would cost, which is what all that 
huge amount of logistics did for us. So we're going to make a counter offer. Willful, you can count the value of the soldiers you're not losing in battle. 5,000 and not one tilla more. Very well. <laughs> Negotiating like this is stressful. <laughs> now, I have in my notes that we went to court, which is a two yielding, a depressed, and a pressured. So we bring down willful, we bring up pressured, and we bring... Well, okay, let's go for court. Sitting in court sessions is not fun at all, but it pleases your father and it may be important for your future. So our dominant mood is pressured, um, which I want to study running in athletics. Ah, sure enough, pressured athletics. Um, so we're going to save again. And we're going to take running and running. All of this athletic stuff is going to help us in the, um, the Briony, I believe will help in the Briony visit to the Old Forest. There are reports of a Keithong sighted leaving the Old Forest. We've all seen this one a hundred times. It's a monster and your father depresses you, which we need to fix. Otherwise our dominant mood will be depression. So we went to the gardens, lonely and cheerful. And we should be angry now. Yep, we're angry. And so we're going to study archery some more. And since we've got this bonus, that'll take us up to 50. So weapons, archery, weapons, archery. I know it feels like we're all over the map. This is kind of timing the classes to the the mood that we ended up with so now we've we've maxed out archery until we can until we train in the other two weapons your archery is now 50 you can't increase this skill until you uh increase the other ones there's a woman here to see you who wants funding for a hospital we don't have the battlefield medicine or herbs to understand why that would be good and we're going to attend services in castle grove to bring down our angry our dominant mood is now depressed and hmm I have down that we studied I have down that we studied two reflexes which is oh we're past tw 25 on all of them so that's fine we can continue so menu save oops we're in week 12 because I skipped 11 return uh, classes we're going to study um Agility re reflexes and agility reflexes. Off we go. You practice chasing a small dog through the castle gardens. So we've reflexed to 64 now. You requested to stand in judgment. A woman has been convicted of attempted murder. Um. I lost my place in my notes. There we are. This is Kevin, Earl of Io. He's very angry. Um, the Slattern dares to beg pardon when she admits she tried to poison my sister under her own roof. Which sister? Corisande, the Duchess of Mead. Uh, we don't have any kind of history to know that this might have been justified. So... <laughs> Oh, we do have enough internal success, internal affairs to have a success that this might have something to do with the last Duke of Mead. He was involved in all sorts of scandals. We're going to say imprison her. You have tried to murder a noble of my domain and have no reason to believe you wouldn't do it again. You will be imprisoned for the rest of your life. You'll not have me. All of a sudden, she breaks loose from her guards and rushes at you. In your court dress, you are unarmed. You grope for a weapon and find only a heavy golden ornament which you hurl in her direction. Our 50 archery is not enough to do any good. <laughs> that sucks. Your missile flies wide of its mark. Before you have a chance to do anything else, your personal guards step into action, cutting the woman down before she can endanger you. Her lifeless body lies bleeding in your carpet. Clean that up. And then we, we sweep out. I love how it says that we're wearing skirts even though we're clearly wearing our cat suit, but I guess that's just something we wear to classes. Um, so we're going to 
go to court again. And now our dominant mood is depressed. And... Hmm. Now I have us studying medicine. Even though we have no bonus to medicine, so that might not be relevant later. Somebody might want to, we might want to double check that at the end. We have Battlefield Medicine and Poison today. Oh, I know why you're getting a, a, a slight bonus. There's a, I'll, I'll talk to that in a second. As you're walking in the gardens one day, you hear a strange sound and look up to see an owl flying overhead. We have no divination and no falcons to know that that's weird. Um, we're going to tend service and bring down our depressed. So our, our, our mood is pressured again. Um, we're getting a slight bonus. Anytime you train skills in the box, like the blue box skills, then it all adds up into this very tiny bonus here. So we had green box skills that had added up into a physical bonus. So... We are now going to study swimming. We have a big bonus to athletics. <laughs> it's like it's like Christmas. I never know what we're going to study until I actually look at my notes. So classes and swimming and swimming. Got a pressured bonus. Wow, that brought swimming up really high. Remember that the festival of the good lady is approaching. There will be public ce celebrations for the commoners followed by grand ball. Oh, that's weird. Why do I have... Oh no, okay, that's fine. Outside the castle you are less well protected. If anyone means you harm, think on it now and decide later. There's a letter for you as well. It's from Brienne. I went to school with her, but she's a couple years older than me. Her duchess, her mother is the Duchess of Mead. She's complaining that her mother still won't let her come home for the holidays. Apparently, her uncle Kevin, that was the, the red-headed angry man, has been acting strangely lately and shouting at shadows. She's bored and looking for an adventure, but I don't have any to suggest to her. Um, so we're going to attend service to bring down our angry. We're still pressured, which still gives us a bonus to athletics. So we're going to take climbing now and we'll unlock a new outfit. And we brought climbing up to 39. You've unlocked a new outfit. Today is the procession and planting for the Festival of the Good Lady. Will you be leading the parade? If you, need, if you have any concerns about your safety, please stay here. The people will recover from disappointment. If we lose you, there is no recovery. I have, I will lead the parade. We won't make a speech. We have no public speaking. Um, I will lead the parade. I'm not afraid I'm going to be the best parade leader ever. You prepare your best gown for the occasion and walk slowly through the town with your attendants. It would not be appropriate for you to wear a sword, but you do walk with a sturdy golden scepter. We have no decoration or elegance, but so we help the priestesses turn over the earth for the new tree, but nobody like oohed and awed too much on our way there. The new life is blessed and all the attendants join in song. The procession regroups, regr <laughs> I can't speak, rejoins at the castle. Um, we'll play with our toys, yielding lonely cheerful. And so we should still have a pressured bonus. And we're gonna go ahead and change into our exercise gear. And I'm going to go ahead and save. I keep doing that. Um, return. Skills. We are going to study more running. I'm pretty sure we need that for the old forest. I think we need like an obscenely high running for the old forest trip. You practice running on sand, providing a different kind of resistance for your legs. Are you ready for the grand ball? All the nobles in the divan are here to see you. We have, 
<laughs> we have no presence, no elegance, no decoration. All around the rich and powerful pause in their activities to gaze upon you. No presence, no elegance, no composure, no decoration. Seeing yourself reflected in so many eyes makes you want to run and hide. After a moment, you force yourself to carry on, but you're sure they've all seen you hesitate. Your father waits for you at the bottom of the stairs and offers his hand. The first dance is for us. After this, you must choose your own partner. There are a number of men who hope to catch your eye. We don't want to marry anyone this time around. We said we were going to uh, romance Brienne. So I'm just going to pick somebody already married. You don't want everyone assuming that whoever you pick first is your intended marriage partner, so what better way to prove that than by choosing someone who's already married? With that in mind, you approach Erwin, the Earl of Ishtar. He's old enough to your grandfather, and his wife is right there with him. I wish he had an avatar. I don't think he does, because just based on this alone, he sounds wonderful. I love him. He seems startled by your approach at first, then thoughtful, and accepts your hand with a kindly smile. Like, just... That right there, he has won my heart. I love you, Erwin, Earl of Ishtar. <laughs> dancing with a real partner feels quite different from dancing with your father. You knew him and his steps like a part of you. Now every move is a mystery. We have like 40 or 50 in dance and we still fell down, which I wonder what would happen if, can we save? We're gonna save. What if we were? pretty tutu because that boosts oh we don't have well we have 30 seconds yeah <laughs> that's what was this we did running and more running done I wonder if this would go <laughs> go through the same stuff, I'm sorry. I just, I want to pass that dance check. And I think we did once. Nope, nope, 37 is not good enough, so we'll just load back to where we were. Um, <laughs> maybe it's like a 40 or 50. Um, between the dances, there is time for the guests to mingle and chat and sample tiny foods with no court manners or flattery. During a lull in the music, Banyan, the Duke of Marie, taps an elegant fingernail against a wine glass. If I might have your attention, I believe we should offer our compliments to our lovely hostess. Her words of wisdom guide us through our difficulties. So, um, he's actually pretty happy with us right now. We haven't uh, contracted ourselves in marriage to anyone who isn't him. Uh, we, we got the province... Uh, the Ixianite war thing sorted out. Uh, not only did we get it sorted out, we got it sorted out with money from our own treasury. His sister didn't have to marry anybody. Um, really, he's he's pleased. <laughs> uh, there's Gwinnell. There's Adele, who also seriously needs an avatar. The youngest daughter of the Duchess of Lilla and a fierce sportswoman. She was a few years ahead of you at school and the absolute terror of the ball fields. No Brienne, she's stuck at school. There's no sign of your cousins. Uh, so on and so forth and done. <laughs> Woo! Got through that. Let's We, 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 we explore the castle. You wander through parts of the castle where other people rarely visit and find little except spiderwebs. And so we just went through a huge mood tonal shift with all the, the ball and then that. So now we are afraid. Ah, uh, which gives us a bonus to meditation. So we're going to do that. Our little afraid face is so cute. You wander downstairs to visit your father to talk about the latest events. You are moving with such enthusiasm that you don't realize your father isn't alone until it's too late to avoid him and his companion. There is Siren, Countess of Miranda and Callisto, who's 25, not a member of your circles. 
She has two minor titles, no husband, and your father's arm in her grasp. You have no composure. Um, so our options, instead of being polite, are to shame her with silent scorn. We don't have the necessary presence to scorn her. The false flattery option, which we don't have the skills for that either. I think it's court manners. Or we can trip her as she passes. We have reflexes, so we're going to do that. You wait until the countess gets closer and you hook your foot around to make her stumble. Flexibility! She trips over you, falling gratifyingly to the floor. Ow! Are you both alright? Willful. I'm fine! She picks herself up and glares at you before forcing a smile onto her face. I think perhaps I should go and sit down. You can't be too careful. When she's gone, you raise an eyebrow at your father. Don't give me that look, young lady. She's a nice woman, nothing more. She wants something more. And it's not going to happen anytime soon. Because we haven't gotten... Nobody's gotten engaged in this playthrough. So apparently nobody is thinking about titles and children right now. That is how influential we are as a 14-year-old heir apparent to the crown. If we don't get engaged, nobody gets engaged. You should be careful how you deal with people like Siren. You need the goodwill of your nobles as well as your commoners. Well, there haven't been any problems so far. As queen, you must be aware of everything around you. We have intrigue. Isn't this what I have agents for? Yes, but you must give them direction. And we needed intrigue to get our... Fu okay, fine. We we're going to say foreign threats. We don't need the assassins one because even though we're going to... The we, haven't, we haven't pissed anyone off, which is good. And even though we're going to... Um, Gwinnell's party we are going to have the skills to survive that on our own um, commoner uprisings shouldn't be a problem and noble props again we've 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 been pretty well behaved so foreign threats I need to know if any foreign powers are moving against me as you wish uh, let's go get our crystal you have not yet reached the crystal are you making progress or is it time for another plan this would probably be the drastic action she mentioned earlier, so we're going to say take drastic action. I suppose I'll have to listen to another plan. Leave it to me. Fine. That night, an explosion rocks the castle. A section of stone near the royal treasury collapses, crushing the guards on duty. So, just so we're clear, Juliana is a murderer. I mean... Depending on how you want to define it. People have died. <laughs> thanks to her magic. Nothing is stolen. At least nothing that is acknowledged. I guess they could have been non-fatally crushed. But I read that as fatally crushed. I don't, I don't read it as like. Ouch. I have a boo-boo. <laughs> nothing is stolen. At least nothing that is acknowledged publicly. But when you look at your father's face. You can see it in his eyes. The crystal is gone. And he knows that you are to blame. He will never trust you the same way again. Well, I am so sorry. Maybe if you'd let me have my crystal in the first place, then I wouldn't have had to... I wouldn't have had to listen to my mentor who <laughs> killed my guards without even telling me what she was going to do. <laughs> what, what's our mood? Our dominant mood is afraid. Which helps with divination. So we're going to do that. Off it goes. <laughs> so we got some stuff on omens now. Um, is time of year to decide any necessary adjustments to the royal budget? The majority of the money we receive is already spoken for, but there's always some room for discretion. We don't have any accounting. Ah, see, this is, I was warned about this. This is one of the changes. Used to, there was an option to keep the taxes the same in addition to raise or lower. And they've changed it probably to make the accounting skill more useful because otherwise, I think there's only maybe two checks that check for accounting, um, neither of which are, are really... But see, and, and, and this kind of bugs me. Like, I'm glad they're still working on the game. I think that's awesome that, you know, they're adding faces and plot lines and stuff like that. That's that's nice. But to me, this feels terribly artificial. Like, just to make the accounting skill 
to, to kind of force you to train in it. Because quite frankly, if I was running a kingdom at 14 and the taxes seemed to be going fine, like, like, are we still eating? Was everything good this year? Don't touch anything would be my... <laughs> you know? But instead I have to either raise taxes, which will probably make the commoners unhappy, or lower taxes, which I hope won't screw up the military stuff. And I don't know which one to do, so we're gonna we're gonna do a save here. What is this? Nineteen. Um, I'm gonna say lower taxes. I think we have enough money. Let's lower the taxes a little. If we get to the battle and we don't have enough money for it then we're gonna have to come back here and, and fix it but this is week 19 and and so okay juliana do you have it you do have it don't you the crystal of course everything is ready for you right there's my sad face did you really have to kill the guard ah so they were crushed to death did you really have to kill the guards if you regret their sacrifice then do not let it go to waste that is not an answer juliana it's too late to turn back now. I have to do the best I can for my people. What do I do? Pick up the crystal with your bare hands, etc. And that's interesting too, because before you actually get a choice to decide whether to... But there's our cool little Sailor Moon animation. You feel dizzy and both larger and lighter than you were before. The crystal has disappeared from view, but you know where it is. I should feel happy, I guess. I'm a lumen now. I just hope I'm doing the right thing. So after all that emotional roller coaster, we're back at pressure being real high. Um, and we're gonna study lore to bring our faith up. I don't know what I used that for. We're gonna have to check that at some point. We unlocked the priestess outfit. Um, you're requested to stand in judgment. A man has been convicted of murder. We've all seen this one. We don't have the the lumen, the sense magic, to, to tell that this guy is a lumen. So uh, we're just going to pardon him. I'm very sorry for your loss. The monsters are responsible, not you. Don't blame yourself. The priestesses of the royal grove will take care of purifying you. Which, she is a lumen, so, you know, maybe she stabs him or something we're gonna walk in the gardens and our predominant mood is still afraid because we brought our pressure down not still afraid it's afraid now which helps our faith so we're gonna study lore again and I'm gonna save again 20 I always name the weeks wrong uh, classes. Oh, there's our new outfit. Um, priestess robe. See? I like that one. I think it's adorable. I totally want some, like, pajamas in that pattern or something. Um, lore, lore, lore. Which brings us to really high. Oh, maybe I need the lore for the... I bet we're gonna use it for the trip to the old, um... The old capital. Yes, that's why. Huh, see? I had a reason for the things that I did. My letter, there is a lady for you who sent this. It isn't signed. <laughs> that's terrible to bring our angry up. An unlucky breeze swirls the window. You can almost reach it. Um, I have that we ignored it. But I think, what happens when you ignore it, you... Nothing happens. I think we have the climbing skill, and I'm wearing my climbing outfit. You take a moment to look at where you'll have to climb in order to reach your target. Ooh, partial success. It doesn't look that bad, but you know your safety requirements, so you put together a simple rope harness just in case. Climbing up onto the roof is awkward and uncomfortable, but you manage to achieve your goal and get back inside without incident. So it didn't change our mood in either way, in either direction. Um, I'm going to leave it that we went and got it because I think, I think, I think if it goes out and circulates among the people, 
it hurts your popularity, maybe? You sneak out of the castle uh, to have a little fun, so we did sneak out for Willful and Lonely. And I think we're back to afraid. Yes, but we're bringing, uh, we're bringing stuff down. Um, we're going to study herbs. And I don't know why I studied medicine. Maybe we'll find out later. I regret to inform you that Fabian, the Earl of Titan and Duke Regent of Elath has passed away. That isn't a surprise. He was pretty old. Um, so we have to decide what to do with young Lord Adair. We don't have the history or eternal affairs to know anything about her. I don't really want to make her angry because we're trying to leave the, um, the nobles to be happy. She's really fond of the kids. So we're just going to leave them with Arise. Um, I've been told that some of the new content, if you marry him, like bring him out to the castle, he actually has a, a face and dialogue now. Um, so I need to go back and redo that playthrough just to see him. But we're going to leave him with Arise. Leave him with his stepmother, as you wish. And we're going to sneak out again. And we should be willful. Is is oop, yep, we're willful. So we're gonna do a save. And this week we are going to study okay, willful helps our lumen skills. So we're gonna study resist magic. I think I could go back through this playthrough and uh, optimize some of the planning some more. Okay, so, oh, oh, here we go. So, there's a woman here to see you. She's a musician and wishes court patronage, which means money. Now she has a face and a name. A common musician singing for her supper. And she's got a little jaunty hat with a little jaunty feather and dark hair and some sort of guitar here or lute or something and adorable purple eyes. Your Royal Highness, if you accept me as a member of your court, I will immortalize you in word and song. I have dabbled in musical styles from many countries and can entertain your guests and lighten your evenings. Immortalize me in words? I wonder if she wrote that filthy poem. We have intrigue to know that musicians are often used as secret agents and messengers. They can be useful and dangerous. We don't have the instrument and voice to tell that she's not quite good enough to justify... <laughs> being a musician um, I have the we rejected her probably to save the money uh, because I don't think she does anything for you if you don't recognize that she's a spy uh, we're going to explore the castle lonely and afraid we're still willful and we're going to study sense magic You receive a letter from young Lord Adair. It's a bit messy and hard to read, but he seems to be thanking you for letting him stay with the family he knows, which is unexpectedly adorable. <laughs> I'm all tearing up. We're going to explore the castle. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for all the kids in this game because... They don't really have a childhood. They're all training to be, you know, dukes and duchesses and queens and... Oh, oh what am I doing? Classes. Wield magic and wield magic is what we want. Because we're, we've still got a... Well, we're afraid now, so we don't have our willful bonus, but oh well. Uh, classes go for wield magic. We've unlocked a new outfit. Your agents that we, we pay for the intrigue check back on trip Seer and Day report a buildup of military strength, particularly warships in Sangia, the major power across the ocean to the west. They may be intending to go on the attack. Oh, wow. We have none of that. Sangia lies a great distance from Nova. You have few diplomatic ties and no known conflicts. There's no reason to assume you would be their target. Still, if they send a fleet across the ocean, Nova might be in danger. At the very least, shipping would be disrupted. 
It takes time to assemble worthy vessels, and you have advanced warning. You could make your own preparations to defend your coast. Ah! That is, you could if you weren't running low on funds in the royal treasury. Grr! Okay, well, there you go. So we have to load the game and go back to week 19. Dang it, 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 dang it. Raise taxes. We need more money. Raise the taxes. Oh, now we gotta go back through all that. Tell you what, I'm just gonna pause and run through and we'll come back. Give me just a second. Okay, and we're back. So we went back to that previous save and raised taxes and then went through all the same choices that you've already seen. So now we're on week 25 again. Your agents report a buildup of military strength, particularly warships in Sanjia. It lies a great distance from Nova. There's no reason to assume you would be their target. Still, if they send a fleet across the ocean, Nova might be in danger. At the very least, shipping would be disrupted. You could make your own vessels in preparation to defeat your co defend your coast. The downside is they won't come cheap. So we're going to build more warships. You send orders for the assembly of new ships and the strengthening of weaponry and cladding on the existing fleet. If trouble comes, you'll be ready for it. Now we're going to play with our toys. You spend the weekend holed up in your room with your favorite toys. It's childish, but you feel a bit better. And I say there's a... <laughs> There's our magical crow up. I'm just, I'm sorry, it looks so funny to me. Our dominant mood is afraid. Ha, huh, wow, we are all over the map there. And we are going to study more magic wielding. Sorry, that's 25, not 26. Return classes, wield magic, wield magic. Off we go. What a beautiful day. It's nice to stop and breathe sometimes. I believe that if we hadn't had the agents and the entry check in the previous week, that was the week where you could get an omen that said, oh my gosh, war is coming. Um, we're gonna tend services and bring down our afraid. We are lonely, which helps medicine. So we're gonna say, um, why am I studying herbs in Battlefield? My, did I think I needed it for the trip to... Because the, the trip to Brienne's or Gwinnell's party, um, if you're wounded, you need herbs and Battlefield medicine. But we shouldn't be. So I think this might be for waste. We'll... We'll do a retrospective at the end. My lady, there are letters for you. Another letter from Brienne. Why does she keep writing me? We were never even friends. She said she's bored and lonely and she's looking forward to seeing me at Gwinnell's birthday party. That's right. Gwinnell is about to turn 15. She'll be Duchess of Sudbury for real now. This other letter must be my invitation to her birthday celebration. This will be a big event, but it's a long way to travel and a lot of things can happen on the road. So we are going to Sudbury for the party. It'll be good to see my friends. Um, we're going to bring our cheerful back down, so we should be lonely again. And we're going to study poison. Oops. Classes. Poison and herbs. Off it goes. And this should unlock a new... Yep, there we go. We're past 25. You've unlocked a new outfit. Okay. On your journey to Sudbury, your character... Your carriage is attacked by bandits. Your character is attacked by bandits. In more ways than one. We have archery and reflexes enough to hear the distinctive sound of incoming arrows just in time to push yourself away from the window and avoid being shot. From the screams outside, not all of your guards have been as lucky. The attackers scatter as soon as your forces so show signs of resistance, vanishing into the woods. The trip p passes without incident, but you can't help jumping at shadows. So we didn't need medicine for that. So 
Maybe we mean it, need it for something else, but 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 we'll see. Gwinnell's party is lovely. Not nearly as glamorous as your own upcoming birthday will be, of course, but it's still a major event on the noble social calendar. Everyone who is anyone is present. Uncle Laurent and your younger cousins are here, but Charlotte and her mother are not. Apparently, Charlotte was ill. Arise, the Duchess of Lilla, is present, but she somehow always manages to avoid talking to you. We run into Leek, the Countess of Dees, who says I will not be shoved aside. Gwinnell says, Mother, it's my domain now. I need space for myself. You have your own lands to manage. This is not my this is my home. It has never been yours. They wait expectantly for you as near queen to settle the dispute. So we're going to side with Gwinnell. You heard her. She's an adult now, and she's in charge here. Thank you. Is this what your father will face upon your coronation? Cast aside without another word? Um, yeah. <laughs> He's not going to like hearing that, is he? Well, he probably wouldn't be cast aside because he doesn't actually try to influence anything. But a bit later, Brienne catches up with you. Hello, Elodie. Brienne is 16. It's so wonderful that you're going to be queen now. I mean, I am sorry about your mother. <laughs> but think of the opportunities you're going to have. You're so lucky. Anyway, I was wondering, now that you're almost queen and everything, have they told you all the secrets? Like how to get into the old palace. I've heard it's packed full of treasures, so that was why we got our lore up so high. You mean the old capital by Cathery Lake, the abandoned one? Exactly. They had to leave in a hurry, so they left all kinds of treasure behind. And no one ever goes there because the forest is supposed to be haunted, so the treasure is probably still there. The forest isn't haunted, just haunted, it's full of monsters like the Keithon. But what if she's right and it is full of ancient treasure? So we're going to say let's help. I don't know any secrets about getting into the old palace yet, but if you come back to the castle with me, we can check the archives. Great, I knew you could help. I'm supposed to go back to school, but I was already planning to sneak off. I'll ditch my escort, sneak ahead, and meet you at the castle. This could be fun! We are going to play with our toys. And I have in my notes that... Oh, well, here's our new nurse's gown from learning, which I also think is adorable. We're going to put the agility outfit on the tutu and save. Oh, it's 28. We just whiz by a bunch of... Nope, I'm still studying herbs for some reason. I'm going to trust my judgment. Sense magic, herbs and sense magic. We are going to be the herbiest herb learner that ever herbed. And we have sense up to 50. I found a bunch of maps of the area around Cathry Lake. Great! I also found reports on all sorts of really nasty monsters down there. That was hundreds of years ago. The palace was abandoned hundreds of years ago. The reports never stopped. I can't find anyone who's gone into the old forest and come back. Well, if it is full of treasure, would you want to tell anyone how you got in and stole some? Look, I know it's dangerous. I'm not stupid. But you and I are educated noblewomen, not peasants. <laughs> I'm good with a sword and a bow. And you, don't you have magic powers now that you're queen? Well, yes. So come with me. It'll be an awesome adventure. Our parents are going to be so impressed. We don't have the conversation to realize that she's doing this for reasons that aren't, but like impressing her parents. So failed that. I'm not really supposed to run off on my own, but we're going to say go with Brienne. All right. We can take horses from the royal stables and sneak out before anyone notices. You are easily able to avoid pursuit as you travel south through the wetlands of Caloris. There is no guard around the borders of the old forest. There isn't any need for one. Caloris has soaked in lore until the stain is permanent. Even an illiterate fisher child knows better. But you are young and innocent, brave and strong. True heroes. Hey, this isn't so bad. It's kind of dark, but that's just because there's so much moss on the trees. It's pretty like lace curtains and it's quiet you could build a secret hideaway here and it's not too dark when the will-o'-wisps are out little sparkly lights don't you think Brienne? sense magic 
She doesn't answer, and the hairs on the back of your neck begin to prickle. There is magic in the air, nearby and strong. You turn to look at your companion and find her pinned against a tree, her eyes bulging wide, her fingernails clawing at thick black ribbons which have wrapped around her body and mouth. Let her go! Magic burns at your fingertips, but it's hard to find any spot to blast that won't harm Bree any more than the monster. Oh, that's why we needed herbs. Wow, well we needed, what, like 80? There has to be some way to force it to release her. In a panic, you slide off your horse, grab up a handful of stinging nettles, not even feeling the pain, and rub them against the black tentacles. You hear a tearing sound, and the monster's ropey arms convulse, allowing Brienne to fall to the forest floor. Unfortunately, the horses, now free of their riders, bolt and leave you alone with an angry tentacled thing. Run! <laughs> Plus ten to afraid. Grabbing Brienne's hand, you tear through the brush, heading back in the direction you came as best you can. There's our running. The murk of the forest seems to close around you, and it's difficult to tell where you're going. How far is safe? Where are those horses? Suddenly, Brienne stumbles, her ankle twisting underneath her. Despite her flighty demeanor, she's not a complete idiot. She gets back up and keeps moving, but she's limping now and clearly slower. We're going to support her. Brienne puts her arm around your shoulders while you grab hold of her waist. Dance! Both of you have experience dancing with partners, and this isn't so different. Together you struggle through the forest until you find your horses again. The two of you manage to return to the castle safely before the week's end, but no time for any extra activities. And our dominant mood should be afraid, because we got a plus 10 to afraid. Um, I don't know that it matters what we wear right now, but let's put on our Lumen outfit. <laughs> um, we're going to save. Whew, so that was exciting, yes? We are going to study divination. But I'm actually, I'm happy. I was trying to figure out why we kept studying so many herbs. And you needed that 80 or, or I think 80 was comfrey. But you needed a lot to get past that check in the forest, I, I can only assume. So divination. Yeah, with a bonus to afraid. Whew. The Duchess of Mead is here to see you, my lady. Elodie, where is my daughter? I'm right here. Brienne, what happened to you? Your clothes, your skin. Well, you see, there was this nasty thing with tentacles, and it sort of grabbed me. You were... You went to the old forest. What were you thinking? You could have been killed. But Elodie, Elodie rescued me. Brienne's mother turns to glare at you. You were there with her? Why didn't you talk her out of this? Angry. I kept her safe, didn't I? She's a hero, mother. There is no such thing. Only fools risking their lives for no good reason. Come on, young lady. We're going home. Yes, mother. The Duchess of Mead leads her daughter away, and you sigh. You should not have risked your life to chase after your friend. What would have happened to Nova if you had died? You have responsibilities. You cannot act on your every whim. Your mother gave her life for this domain. How can you disrespect her memory like this? Ugh. <laughs> I have complicated feels, but okay. Fine, I'm sorry. <laughs> In your heart, you know he's only yelling at you because he loves you and he was afraid for you, but at the moment, that doesn't lessen the sting. So, oh my gosh, what is our mood right now? Okay, we need to bring up... Let's go play sports for the angry. You take to the court for a few games of tennis. Feel the thrill of competition. And we're still afraid, but we'll see if we can't fix that. Skills. We're going to take climbing. So we've got uh, athletics, climbing, and athletics, climbing. Yes. Off it goes.
As you are walking through the Great Hall, a freak gust of wind suddenly blows out all the candles in the room. Divination. An omen of war and danger. It must be Sanjia. They're going to attack. Um, we are going to visit the dungeons for the angry. You sneak a peek at some of the luckless peasants, which we only... The dungeons are weird. We get a willful and angry because we're affected by willfulness or be, because... I don't know if the dungeons give us affected by willfulness or if we get willful and angry because we're already willful. We could check. Are we willful? We are willful. No. We are afraid. So this is some kind of status that I'm not, I need to research what that means. But anyway, uh, they're obviously bad people, but seeing them so miserable still feels unfair. There must be a better way. When I, I appreciate that Elodie grasps that nuance. Um, put on our intrigue outfit for catsuit, and we've got... Okay, now, now we're going to try to backfill our military. So we're going to take um, naval strategy... Yeah, two naval strategies. And that should bring us to 30? Not quite 40. Okay. Things have been so unsettled lately. Everyone's on edge. We need something cheerful. You could hold a tournament. What will you offer as prizes? Employment. It's a recruitment drive. As you move through the hall, your eyes fall upon a vase of flowers. We have divination, a leaf killed by a secret weakness, a hidden threat. My lady, a gift has arrived from Kegel, a merchant house. It's got chocolates. They're poisoned. There's something suspicious about this. We had the intrigue. So we're going to say, oh. I've never seen this before. I don't know if it's new. I hope it's new. Because it would be nice to not have somebody die at the at the at the at the tournament. Uh, sense magic success. The gift doesn't appear to be enchanted. Medicine success. You know enough about poisons to conduct some simple experiments. Sadly, your suspicions prove correct. Someone has tried to kill you. You send for the guards and begin asking a lot of pointed questions about these chocolates and how they got to your room without a food test. Well, that explains why we just eat them. We assumed they'd been food tested already. That's a, if they added that recently, that is a good addition. It probably screws with my mood calculations, but I'm okay with that. We're going to attend service. We are still willful, which gives us a bonus to military, which is really all I needed right now. So strategy, strategy. Off we go. We should unlock a new outfit. Excellent. You've unlocked a new outfit and can tour the barracks on the weekends. This is the week of the general tournament. Nobles and commoners alike have turned out to compete against each other. The people will be pleased if you participate in their games. However, it would expose you to danger. Which event do you want to take part in? We're going to say archery because that's the one thing we're actually kind of decent in. You make your way to the archery field. Ah... So even a 50 doesn't. None of your, neither of your shots come anywhere near the target, and you were swiftly eliminated. The only comfort is that with so many shooting at once, few can tell how badly you did. I didn't do that badly. I have a 50 in archery. Or in, yeah, in archery. All the winners are announced and displayed to great tears. Cheers as near queen, you place flower garlands around their neck. This is new. I haven't seen this before. After the tournament, you receive a report on the poison chocolates. Because in my notes... We just saved them for later and somebody died at the tournament because somebody always dies. You receive a report on the poison chocolates. The merchant house named on the card is fictitious. No such traitor is registered in Kegel. However, the chocolates themselves arrived in a shipment from a trusted supplier, one whose goods are only subject to the occasional sampling checks instead of more thorough scrutiny. Ah! Ah! Well, oh! I would have liked to know what that trade check was. Uh... I went 
take a note of that and actually pass at some point. Regardless, surely someone in palace security should have been paying more attention. Ah. Uh... Wow, this is... It's so rare for me to see something I've never seen before. Um, I don't want to punish the guards or the suppliers yet. Um... We'll wait for more information. I need to find my real enemy. God, I really want to pass that trade check. So, in my notes, we went to the dungeons for the willful angry. So that's what we're going to do here. And we put on our military outfit. I think that's... No, that's not all the outfits. There's a couple I'm not, I don't have. We don't have the... We don't have the weapon tabard thing. We don't have the animal handling one. And we don't have any of this. <laughs> Look at our social. Oh my god. <laughs> we just we just plan to govern by like raw agility, athletics, military precision, and like <laughs> screw social skills, I guess. Um, we're about to go into war, so we're going to have naval strategy classes and our awesome little Napoleon outfit. Oh, just a little bit more. Dang it. Oh well, maybe the outfit will push us over. My lady, your father wishes to speak with you. He says it's urgent. You find your father standing over a map of the coastline, his face grave. Ships have been sighted on approach from Sanjia. Not trade ships, this is a war fleet. I've been expecting something like that. Within a week they will be in noble waters. Within two they could reach the capital. We will fight to defend ourselves. You can try to use treasury funds to hire additional soldiers, so we're going to do that. You will need to draw up a naval strategy for our ships to carry out. You could choose to act as admiral and lead the fleet in person, but the danger to you would be very great. Unless you think your personal skills will make the difference, I strongly... Well, we're going to direct the fleet. The risk is mine to take. You have your mother's heart. There's one more thing. I hesitate to ask it, but an invasion is the sort of disaster for which a lumen's power may be worth the cost. So gosh, wouldn't it have been excellent if I hadn't, as 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 Duke of Calaris King Dowager, tried to send away your magic tutor and and keep you from learning magic by st you know what? Just ah, ah just Jocelyn, I just wanna shake you. If the fleet could be destroyed before they reach our waters, many lives would be saved. I don't know any magic that could sink a whole fleet. I'll have to talk to my mentor. A fleet from Sanji is attacking us. Is it possible to sink them all with magic? It's easy enough to attack one shoulder, one ship, as a demonstration. But to obliterate an entire fleet, you would need an immense amount of power spread over a large area. If you tried to blah, 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 raise that much power yourself, you would die, not could, would. So it's hopeless. Which is good, because we didn't want to raise Cthulhu anyway. Let's go look at our barracks. You are impressed by the discipline of the Nova troops, but the responsibility for their lives weighs heavily on your shoulders. There are approximately 11 battalions and two platoons under your direct command. Your newest ships of the line are undergoing final checkout. I have... The, ooh, ooh, with the outfit, we're up to 95. I'm going to study logistics. I'm going to save, because I'm a little scared. I mean, it worked in my notes, but... That doesn't mean anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe it changed. Armies do not spring up full-formed overnight. I think we're gonna max out logistics. We did! I wonder if we should have studied strategy instead. Oh well. Danger on the high seas. Ships close in on each other, angling into range. There's our climbing. You clamber up the rigging to take a position in the crow's nest where you can watch the enemy's movements with a spyglass and shout out any necessary changes in plans. The Sanjians outnumber you slightly, but it could all come down to strategy. Your skill in long-range magic makes you effective as a cannon and more maneuverable, but there are far too many ships for you to take each one out individually. Still, your position in the crow's nest allows you to target ships at a distance too great for them to respond effectively. I love the mental image of Elodie in a crow's nest just boom, 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 
of blowing up ships from a dis- Oh my god, I love that idea. Um, the eventual outcome is a hard-fought victory. <laughs> Look at that. Test war. <laughs> Success. <laughs> we won. We didn't have to be invaded. We don't have to have the march to the capital. We don't have to negotiate with slash fight slash sing for that asshole from Sanjia. We won the naval battle. <laughs> you have repelled the invasion fleet, driving the survivors back across the sea. You and your sailors are heroes, and Nova is safe once more. Yes! Let's go play sports. You take the core for- you know what would have been interesting? Save. How many troops do we have left? Oh, it doesn't say. Load. <laughs> they didn't- I probably didn't want to math that out. <laughs> okay. Look how happy we are. Look at our mood of cheerful. <laughs> I love Elodie. We are going to study... We're going to study decoration because we've got a coronation coming up. So, expression, decoration, off we go. <laughs> Although, who needs decoration when we just saved our country at 14 by being a naval genius and a magical cannon. We have obtained a number of Sanjian prisoners who survived the naval battle. A few are from wealthy families and can be ransomed, but most are common sailors and soldiers. What do you intend to do with them? Um, I don't remember what the world history check is. So we're going to say um, ransom the rich and conscript the poor. Ransom back the ones whose families will pay. Offer the soldiers and such their freedom if they are willing to serve in my army instead. We're going to sit in on court sessions. We're going to keep studying decoration. This is really for the, the coronation at the end. And I don't, I don't even know if we get enough to, we may. Um, now that the issue of the prisoners has been dealt with, an enormous festival is held all over Lampsy Island to celebrate your victory over Sanjia. People are hanging your portrait outside their homes and decorating it with flowers like a shrine. Everyone loves you. We're going to play with toys. We're, we're cheerful again. We're going to study um, one decoration to get us to 50, and we're going to study court manners. I don't know which outfit we should be wearing. I don't know that it matters, and I like our little Napoleon outfit. Time has slipped by you so quickly. Only two weeks remain before your birthday celebration and your official coronation as queen. Have you done enough to build a stable, Nova? It is traditional for the palace to provide entertainment and refreshment. It is a rare opportunity for the poor to dine like nobles. So we are going to have an extravagant feast. I can give out commemorative cups and coins. And we're going to play with our toys some more. I think I'm just trying to keep our cheerful up. Um, I'm just going to save because why not? Uh, we are going to study public speaking. Oh, I was going to maybe change our outfit. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. The castle is buzzing with preparation for your upcoming coronation. Ministers press you with details for your favorite colors and flowers. Oh, there's our decoration. You are happy to collaborate with the designers to ensure you are shown off to the best possible effect. You are still so young after all. Good design will help a lot in making you look like a queen. Others are more interested in the subject of your marriage. Whomever you decide to marry will be elevated to the highest ranks of the nobility, which could mean a major shift in the balance of power. Therefore, everyone is talking about the top candidates, even though you're under no obligation to marry so young. Talaris, the Duke of Sedna, is one option. Certainly, he expressed interest in marrying you earlier. Your union would bring stronger ties to the domain of Talais and improve the situation along the Elaf border. 
Then there is Banyan, the Duke of Marie, a powerful and eligible noble only about 10 years older than you. He's, he's only about like 17 more years years older than us so if we're 14 he's 31 but okay whatever there is kevin the earl of io although he is only an earl his family connections could make him politically useful there's little adair the eventual duke of elath although at 12 he's only a child at least he's old enough to understand the concept of romance some people think you ought to marry Gwinnell's half-brother, Anchiot, who hasn't even turned nine yet. There are two or three minor earls around the age of 20 who might be passable, passable alternatives, and of course you could decide to ignore noble traditions entirely and marry a commoner if you are prepared to deal with the uproar. And then there is the most recent letter you received from Brienne, which was all about how clever and strong and wonderful you are. You rescued her from a terrible monster, after all. It's apparently the most romantic thing that's happened in her entire life. While you would need to marry eventually, you were still very young. You could put off this decision until later. However, a clear succession contributes to the stability of your domain. Are you leaning towards any option? Oh, oh, oh! There's our Brienne option! I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at it with my finger and you can't see, but I'm Brienne! <laughs> There's no time to pursue that thought at the moment, but perhaps in the future... Um... <laughs> we're gonna walk in the gardens. And I don't think it matters what we wear. I'm gonna study, um... We're gonna study flattery, which would have, which will open, ha, which would open a new outfit. But I, we're not gonna have time to put it on. I wish we could, but at least we tried. We have some decent conversation and public speaking now. Oh, at this time last year, you were celebrating your 14th birthday. It didn't matter that you were a princess then. Your title was something for the future. Your parents could not attend on the actual day, but they did send wonderful gifts. And a week later, they came for a visit, and your mother took you with her through the countryside in a splendid carriage. And now I'm getting, I'm getting teary-eyed over a sequence that I've seen a hundred times. It was the last time you would ever see her. You wonder if, wherever she is, she can see you now. You're 15 years old, a legal adult. You have worked and studied and suffered and prepared, and now the time has come. <laughs> You kneel before the priestess, barely hearing her words as she recites the blessings. She calls upon the gods to deliver peace, wisdom, and prosperity to you and through you to all of Nova. And so now we take our oath of rulership. And I, I always love this detail that her neck and shoulders and ears are bare while she's taking the oath. And then one at a time... The head of each duchy approaches your throne and kneels to swear his or her service to you and your heirs. People of Nova, I give you Elodie, daughter of Fidelia, your true sovereign. What say you all? And then once you're crowned, you have like the earrings and the golden hair twirls and a necklace and the... I just, I like that symbolism. Okay. Once his daughter was secure on her throne, Joslin returned to his birthplace to focus on his duties as Duke of Caloris. He was pursued by many women, but showed little interest in remarrying, directing them instead to his brother, the Duke of Mazomba. The subject of magic and lumens remained a slightly uncomfortable one for the citizens of Nova, perfectly fine for the queen, who had inherited it by divine right, but not something that other people should be aspiring towards. Look at all the terrible things that happened when that power fell into the wrong hands. As an openly acknowledged lumen, Juliana, Duchess of Rousseau, was met with public suspicion and thrown vegetables. Um, which is, is bad ending. I, I, she did, you know, kill a couple of guards, but okay. Juliana's perpetually unmarried state was even more worrying to those with wagging tongues. What if that influence rubbed off on the queen and left Nova with no heir? The loss of their fleet was a terrible setback for Sangia. 
However, as with a garden weed, if the root is not burned out completely, the infestation may return even worse than before. The king of Sanjia has somehow escaped either drowning or capture and returned to his home plan to plot revenge against Nova. Raising a new army put a strain on the Sanjia royal treasury, which brought internal tensions among the former city-states to the fore. It would be some years before Sanjia could manage to feel the conquering horde again. Well, if they do, they can bring it. <laughs> One of the young queen's closest confidants was Brienne of Mead, whom Elodie formally appointed as her royal lady-in-waiting, and less formally as lady of the royal bedchamber. The two carried out a very public flirtation, complete with moonlit serenades under balconies and the ritual slaying of imaginary dragons. Both women did marry in time, but they never gave up their affection for each other. So you do still marry to some... It, it doesn't say who to someone, um, but but you and Brienne have a lifelong romance. Elodie's interest in military strategy led her to treat country management as something of a game, a game she intended to win. That meant building up Nova's strength to the point where no invader could ever threaten its sovereignty again, and thus Queen Elodie's legacy stretched into the future. So, you know... It's it's not obviously the the happiest of endings where you're the pink angel and you save the world through song and everything is lovely and unicorn and rainbows, but it's a good ending. Your 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 crown is secure. You build up and strengthen your country. You have a romance with someone that you care very strongly about and yet still have a marriage that presumably produced heirs and children it, it doesn't say but i'm going to head canon that it does and um you know okay things are still tense with sanjia but they're really in no position to do anything about it right now so i'm calling this a good ending so let's see what new content did we see we saw we saw that the minstrel spy has a face um which was nice. Uh, we saw that the um, economics now force you to either raise or lower taxes. You can't keep them the same, which I'm, I'm not a fan of that change, but okay. And um, oh, and we got a chance to test the chocolates for poison, which I thought was great. And I really want to go back and do a trade check now and see. I'll try to work that into another playthrough or do an old playthrough that had trade. Um, so, okay, that was the romance Brienne option and um, I don't remember if you get any um, steam achievements for this playthrough obviously you beat the the naval battle which was very exciting but I think we did that in a previous playthrough so if you've been following them all you should already have that badge um, but regardless super fun to see the old forest beat the na navy and win Brienne's heart Thank you so much for staying through for the whole hour and 30 minutes. And I hope to have another one up uh, as soon as I can. It usually takes me a couple of weeks to get around to, to recording a full one. Uh, thank you all so much. Once again, I'm Anna Mardal, and I will see you in the next video.